before we go ahead and design our database, uh, I want us to understand one important design consideration with our databases, and that is that we need to know how to be able to do a normalized database. And there are a lot of uh, information about database normalization. Here's the Wikipedia page on database normalization. In fact, when Cod developed his relational model, this was kind of the mathematical underlying representation what made data, uh, relational databases performant and were, it, were able to get the high performance that we expect from relational databases today. Um, and, and so this, this has a very uh, solid mathematical underbacking to it, but I'm not going to go into those details here. What instead I'm going to do is I'm going to give some rules of thumb about how you normalize a database and um, how you go about uh, making sure that you have an idea uh, that your database is on track for being normalized. If you want to know more, you really want to follow it up in the advanced database uh, course. The, the first rule of thumb that I'm going to give you is, I'll just call it no plurals, okay? And what I mean by that is if, if you've got some database table right here, and let's say it's a, a person table, let's call it person table, and you've got a name and a bunch of other attributes in there. One thing that we don't want to have inside this database is a child database. Let's say this is uh, literally a children, a list of, of children that that, that person has. The, this has potential to be plural and in fact with most people we don't even know the, the right number for, for that table in there. So there, there ten, turns out to be a lot of problems with this database. So the first thing we want to do is in, instead of having plurals in, in our database, it, instead is we want to have single valued fields. Okay, And uh, the no plural uh, will come into play as, as in other ways as well. But this is the big deal. We, if we want a name, we want a single name. Uh, you could have a, another way to, if, if someone has nicknames, you don't want to put that in a table in their field. You're going to want to make a separate table for their nicknames and then somehow link that nickname to that person. Uh, and and so forth. There are there are all kinds of ways that you can introduce uh, plurals into a table really easily that we we don't want to do. And then the the second rule of thumb is uh, that we want to uh, eliminate as much as possible. So eliminate redundancy. Redundancy. Okay, and and this is a, a a big key for our database. So, if we've got a, a database that has, let's say, we're doing Amazon, uh, and and we've got a table here, and let's say this uh, is the orders, and uh, in in here we might have an order ID. We might have, say, a customer ID. Now, an example of a, a bad choice would be here to have the, the customer name. Because, and I'm going to cross it out right away because it's such a bad idea, because it, in this case, the, the customer name is going to repeat every time that they make a new order. And we know their customer name is associated with their customer ID. And so this is this is a bit of redundancy. Let's say that person decides to change their name or or, or something like that. The the reason why a normalized database that doesn't have this in there is better is it reduces what's called an update anomaly where it could be real easy to change the customer name in one place in your database but fail 
to change it in all places in the database. And so that's why we don't want to have redundancy. If we need to change information, um, add new information or remove information, we only want to have to do it in, in one place. And redundancy makes that very difficult to do. It, it makes it very easy to make a mistake and all of a sudden we've got inconsistent data. In one place we think that that customer name is John Doe, in another place it's Jonathan Doe. Uh, and it's very important to make our database arranged so that the chances for redundancy are removed as much a as possible. And so in this case, of course, what we would do is we would put in an auxiliary table that incorporated the customer information and this customer ID would be the foreign key into that customer table from this, this order table. And th that is a, a real quick rule of thumb how you can get a very good laid out database um, and, and not have to understand uh, in detail first normal form and, and second normal form and so on, your, your voice cod normal form and, and on and on. Um, if you follow these general rules of thumb, you're going to start to approach second or, or even third normal forms and that is usually a, a, a very good thing.